Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my new video. And somebody told me in my comment section that all I talk about is bad news. Um, so I'm going to talk about some good news for a change. So it looks like this um, Chinese um, uh, maglev train has been tested in China for the first time. And this test was very, very successful. And you can see from the speed, the speed, we're talking about 600 to 1000 kilometers per hour, uh, this could go. And this would be faster than airplanes. And you can get from Beijing to Shanghai just over an hour, uh, maybe, maybe a couple of hours, it depends. And um, and it's amazing, guys. I mean, the fastest train in America right now is about 130 to 150 kilometers per hour. So this is like the next generation um, of, you know, high-speed trains in, in China. And this could re revolutionize complete travel in China. So what benefits does it bring? Um, so first of all, um, I spoke about this. Um, I think I made one video about this a couple of years ago, uh, but you know the Western papers started trashing Chinese high-speed rail. There was a lot of articles coming out at the time, and a lot of them were saying that Chinese high-speed rail is in debt, is not making any money, uh, they're going to go bankrupt, and that was in 2020. 2021 these articles are coming out well it's 2025 now and high-speed rail has not become bankrupt in china in fact it is it's expanded to more cities more lines are uh, popping out and uh, recently they built this amazingly new um, high-speed rail station in chongqing chongqing east i believe it's called and uh, it's huge it's the biggest train station in the world absolutely huge and um and yeah so yeah i mean it's end of the day guys it's not about making money in china a high speed rail when when you link one city to the next you know the, imagine the economic benefits it would bring to these cities um so for example if you have a high speed rail going from shanghai to Kind of all the neighboring cities, all those neighboring cities will economically be better because you know you will have high speed rail link directly linking Shanghai, which means um, you know you can post uh, goods in and out of Shanghai to those neighboring cities. Um, workers can travel between cities, um, you know. Goods can be imported, exported between those cities at a far, much faster scale. So, and, th and those cities around Shanghai will also become, you know, rich as well, same as Shanghai. And their GDP will increase and, and all of China's GDP will increase, basically. So, so these high-speed rail links bring more benefits than just money. And if more people travel with high-speed rail links, obviously the money will come as well. Um, there's a lot more tourists going into China. A lot of tourists have been coming into China over the last couple of years because China has been opening up their visas to a lot of countries. So millions and millions of tourists are also traveling with these high-speed rails. And... Um, so China is making money. Uh, I think in the last holidays, um, I was looking at some of the results in the last holidays, uh, and it looks like they've generated, you know, over a billion billion trips were made in the last holidays in, in high-speed rails in, in China. And if you work that out you would, with how much you know, money high-speed high rail has been making in China, we're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars per Per year, probably more actually, and this is increasing as more lines are coming out, more people are traveling with high speed rail, more tourists are going into China traveling with high speed rail, and it's becoming more and more popular. 
So the benefits is not, it's not just about money. It's also benefits to the Chinese cities, Chinese economy, uh, benefits the people, makes things easier for them. Other benefits is basically China relies less on fuel and, and gas uh, when you're driving. So people don't need to rely much on cars. Um, if it's EV cars, it's fine. But, you know, there's still a lot of gas cars in China still. And that's reducing year by year, by the way. And also people don't need to fly planes. Plane, planes is very, um, um, you know, is very not very economical in terms of um, pollution. Um, a lot of kind of pollutants is required to fly. Uh, so it's much safer for the environment, much better for the environment. And also China doesn't need to buy as many Boeing planes from America and Airbus from Europe as well. So they can save a lot of money in the long term. So they don't have to rely much on kind of those planes. Even though China's got its own planes, uh, that's going to take time to build up its fleet. It's going to take uh, another five to ten years to build up its fleet. So that's going to take time. So in the meantime, they don't need to buy so many Boeing planes. And you know, and right now you you cannot be relying on America and Europe because in the, the day they can sanction you at any moment. And so that's a big danger for for China. So this is a really good way of them becoming self reliant. Uh, they are. They have total control of, over their own um, technology, um, and also their energy um, as well. Plus, they can export this technology to their friendly countries as well. Recently, they've exported high-speed rail to Indonesia, or successful, um, and also they are exporting high-speed rail to Vietnam as well. And that's uh, that's happening very very soon. And plus, they'll be doing the rest on Thailand, Malaysia, all the neighborhood countries, and they'll have Chinese high-speed rail. So this is really good news for China. Um, I think um, overall, you know, you know, this is good, just going to add more GDP. Plus, if you think about it, guys, if you, you know, if you reduce the travel time between Shanghai, Beijing, and all the major cities, if you reduce travel time between Shanghai to Chongqing, for example, or Chengdu. If you reduce the travel time to uh, Lanzhou to Shanghai, or if you reduce it to Shanghai to kind of Xi'an or something like that, you you know that means less people waste time traveling. So that means more time can be put on increasing the GDP of China. So for example, um, for example, if you got, you know, if you have a work meeting in Shanghai and you're working in Beijing, and rather than you traveling for all day or, you know, God knows how many hours, you can, you can basically travel for an hour and work the rest of the day. So that GDP is not wasted on travel. You can basically work in the office, go to meetings, and, and you know be productive. Or you're not going to be that tired as well. Sometimes if you're traveling all day, if you're traveling six, seven hours, you're going to be extremely tired. You want to go to sleep. You're not going to be productive. So reducing time travel it, it increases the GDP and in, increases productivity, and it's great for the economy as well. So yes, yeah, so there's some really great news there coming out of China. So let me know what you guys think and I'll see you in the next video. Take care for now.